Good evening and welcome to our pigskin preview Bay County football style for the 2017 year. Jeff Doan and Mike Wasdala just excited about the possibilities for Not Not 17. Well, Jeff, I'll tell you what, we're going to have a great football season here at Bay County TV. It's going to be really exciting. We got some great football teams, some good football teams going to play a really good schedule this year and a couple uh, new rivalries are going to be formed this year, so I'm looking forward to this year. New rivalries that were old Old rivalries. We're going to get an opportunity to see a little eight-man football as well. Yeah, we're going to have uh, basically all Saints is going from 11-man to eight-man football. Jeff got 19 kids out. Going to be real, real exciting. Not too many people in this area have seen eight-man football. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious, wild and woolly, and a lot of points are going to be scored by the Cougars. Well, and we've got a bunch of teams from last year that made the playoffs. They are turning back into tradition-rich programs, and we're excited for the possibilities from them as well. Yeah, this is really good. we got a good schedule this year, Jeff, for the football season. We're going to be busy every Friday night. We're going to be all over the place, and we're going to open up on the road with Garber at Ogama Heights, an old place that you and I are very familiar with with our radio days. So I think we got a great schedule, and uh, hopefully uh, some of these teams will take us in into that 10th uh, week and we get some playoff uh, wins for us also. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. The best is yet to come over the next hour or so here with our Bay County Football Preview here 2017. We start this preseason special off with somebody that's no stranger to the area. Over three decades of fun, it's been a great joy and always a pleasure to have Coach Marley Frazier. Thanks for the, uh, the, the voice of sports in Bay County. I appreciate <laughs> you guys being here. Thanks. We did this back in 94, uh, had a great time. So it's been a fun ride and you guys always do a great job. We appreciate you coming out here. Thanks. That was unsolicited, by the way. <laughs> As we start talking about this team, I want to talk about last year. You know, you had a very young team last year. You really had some question marks of what's going on, but you had a couple of big victories early in the year that got those young kids excited, and you really springboarded from there. We did. We, uh, you know, we, we beat Schwartz Creek at the very end of the of the game, and then went and got uh, thumped by Dow and Powers. And, and you know, you, you do count games. Uh, how many you're going to get to get six? And so we had Midland coming up, and all of a sudden we beat them. It's like, you know, holy cow, we could. These young kids are getting better. Something could happen here, and it did. End up making the playoffs for the first time in quite a while. Coach, you've been uh, about a week now at the practices for the 17 season. Just curious, uh, how, how's the team looking? What's your evaluation so far only one week into the, into the season? You know, probably as good a week as we've had in a long time, and I think a lot of that is because of our seniors, a lot of seniors, and, and what, we, what we see is when we're going through drills and stuff, these seniors are grabbing the juniors and sophomores in the back of the line. They're actually coaching them. Guys that potentially could beat them out you know, for a starting spot, and they're working with them, and that's the kind of camaraderie you got to have. We talk about this all the time, the juniors the seniors got to get together. They got to stay together as a team. If that happens, you could have a good season. And, and that, that building block has been laid this week. Well, you've got a very gifted and talented running back to start things off, but your other skilled position player, you got a veteran coming back, even though he's still an underclassman at quarterback. Yeah, Brian Elder uh, started the uh, second game of the season last year and just gotten better and better and better. And by the end of the year, he was throwing the ball as well as any quarterback I've ever had. Um, he's worked hard in the offseason. He's got a, a good group of young receivers coming back, and he's worked hard with them. And so from that standpoint, we think our passing game should be pretty good. Well, one thing about a quarterback, and he's a junior this year, if I'm not mistaken, he's got a little moxie about him. I was watching him on the 7-7. Seven and seven. He's got some leadership skills in there, and when he walks into the huddle, I think he's got command of that huddle. He does, and, and you know, it helps that he plays three sports. Yep. So he's competing in basketball, and he's a competitor. He gets out and mixes it up. He's a pitcher in baseball, and so we want our kids to do that. We want them to experience that kind of uh, pressure all year round. He does that, and that shows when he comes back to football. When I watch this group out here, I see a very unified group and talk about the importance of all these kids being together. You know, we started, Matt Hemingway started what we call a leadership council a couple of years ago, and, and we've emphasized that in our leadership council, that, that uh, you know, your seniors, you got to treat the juniors. Yeah, they carry equipment and stuff like that, but they're your equal. And, and uh, treat them how you want to be treated. If there was a senior last year that wasn't treating you just right, then, then don't treat that junior like that. And that, that all builds a unity. 
Well, and one real special thing that's happened in the Valley this year, Coach, is uh, you got a new member in the Valley, and, and it's uh, Bay City John Glenn. The Bobcats are in the Valley. Let's talk about them, their addition. I mean, it's going to be a great game. You've got them here for homecoming. homecoming. We're uh, we're looking. We're going to be here. We're looking forward to that, and that's a good quality, uh, tradition-rich program for the Valley. It really is. It's a great addition, not only in football, but all our sports. Mm -hmm. um, they're solid in everything. You know, they offer the freshman JV varsity sports and everything that we need. Um, are they winning, going to win a lot of Valley championships? We don't win a lot of Valley championships in these sports. They're a rarity. And so, but you're in a league competing. They're going to have natural rivals in us in Western, Midland, Midland, Dow. They're not going to have to travel 100 miles for a game. And so for them coming in the league, yeah. you know, we're excited to have them. I'm sure they're excited to be in the league too. Well, and I talked to Matt Schmidt and I said, your travel budget's going to go down by $10,000 because you look at that team last year, Alpina, Adrian, two years ago, they had to go to Kalamazoo. So good fan base. They're going to bring in a lot of people. It's going to be real exciting with them in the Valley. They will. I and mean, we have them for homecoming, like you said. And, and you imagine the crowd we're going to have yeah. here, you know, compared to, you know, not slamming any other Valley school, but you get a local school coming over here. This place is going to be packed. It's going to be exciting. Yep. One other thing I want to touch on is the great continuity you have on your coaching staff. Yeah, that we do. These guys have been around. I mean, Gene Rodermaker's been here for 31 years. Matt Hemingway played for us. Ben Tonkey played for us. Was a volunteer. One of McConaughey's head coach. He's back. Brought Andrew Kazanowski with him, who volunteered for a while. Freshman love, you have Brian Bishop, Mike Machieski, Central guys, Eric Anderson, uh, and Jay Shable on the, on the freshman level. They are Bear Bay City Central grads. Those guys have been around a long time. And so it tells me that, that our coaches are doing something right, that those kids want to come back and coach here at Bay City Central. Yeah. And uh, they're Bay City Central guys. We like that. Well, and we uh, saw Tomke up in Pinconi, and then his maturation as a coach was just uh, extraordinary, and he did a great job up there. Had some tough times, but he stuck to the program, and he did what he had to do and, and uh, got that first win in a long time and really – set the standard for Coach Lavasser up in Pinconning. He really did. He really laid the groundwork. Um, I went and watched a couple of his games. His kids were well coached. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get out, you know, he was an assistant. You're their head man. you got to deal with everything. And he really did grow up a lot. And he's a, a he's our defensive coordinator. And, and you know, I can I can leave tomorrow. And either any of those guys can step in and, and take over for me and not lose anything. So I'm pretty lucky. Well, Coach, we are excited about the possibilities, and we know that with this group of kids, something special is going to happen. But win, lose, or draw, we know they're very well coached. You're a class act, and we wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're, uh, like you said, it's football season. <laughs> you know, the Tigers are trading everybody away, so we don't watch them anymore. So <laughs> let's go. All right? Go Coach, ready. good luck. Have a great year. Thank you. Always a pleasure appreciate to it. see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we'll, be we'll be back in just a minute with our preseason special as it continues from Bay City Central. <laughs> Welcome back to our preseason special here on BCTV. It's our pleasure to have Lee Morgan with us. And Lee, as it's preseason for the players, it's also preseason for the officials. Oh, very much so. With all the new rule changes coming in place for risk minimization, it's been a really hard teaching fall for us already. Yep. Lee, how, uh, how long have you been uh, working on getting ready for the football season? I know it's probably uh, a year-round job now, but when did you start for football? Um, we started training with the MHSA camp in June, and then we've continued all on. Uh, we really go hard in August with the guys, especially with, like I said, the new rule changes this year. It's, it's really been a task, but we're looking forward to a great season. Good. Well, some people call it a rule change. Some people call it a rule modification. Uh, nonetheless, trying to clarify with people how this uh, new hit is interpreted. Can you fill us in a little bit? Well, the interpretation part's what scares me as an assigner because everybody's judgment is going to be a little different. The rules are put in now to minimize risk on the football field. It's a safety issue up and down. So how they do it, the new rules for contact and excessive contact is what we're after. The head hunts, the shots, all the stuff that used to make the highlight videos is not going to be a legal hit anymore. It'll now be a low light video because it will be penalized and yeah. hopefully enforced uh, very strictly early on so that we don't have to enforce it later. That is our goal. 
Uh, we talked to the kids here today about what's what used to be football, Jeff, when you and I were, were doing it. It is definitely not football in the 2017. Yes, very much so. Well, I know we, we appreciate, and I know Coach uh, Frazier appreciates you bringing your guys out here and, and talking to the kids and stuff like that. You got a great crew, a lot of experience. Let's talk about some of the guys and how long they've been around and, 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 your, and your, uh, your conference of Metro, Con Metro League that you guys are in. Um, well, in camp today, we have uh, a gentleman that's been an official for 51 years. He's still out training today. We've got new guys that have been three weeks. Uh, we range anywhere this 51. Uh, this is 36 for me. Uh, we got a great group. The biggest thing with Bay Metro is how we train, and Jeff can tell you that. I mean, we get going, we get at it, we get after it, we try to teach them, we try to put them in the best position to, to make the call, to let their judgment work. And then if they make the bad choice, we try to coach them back up, just like Morley does with the kids. Well, and as an ex-coach, you know, one of the things when I was coaching, I didn't really want to have anything to do with you guys. I didn't want to see you. I didn't want to talk to you unless, you know, hi, how are you doing and stuff. But if you're out of the picture and you're doing your job, then everything's going to go well as far as a coaching standpoint. Well, I agree. The, the whole thing, as an official, I want you to communicate with me. I want you to tell me, when, Lee, I think you missed a call. Lee, I, I, I don't understand why that call is being made. You need that open communication line. Good officiating crews have that. They're there for the coach when the coach wants it. The last thing I want to do is tell you how to coach your kids. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you how to ref. <laughs> well, you might try, <laughs> yeah, right. but the problem is, is understanding both coaches and officials need to know the rule book. Yep, yep. If you know the rule book, know how it's enforced, I can come over and Morley's fantastic. He might disagree with me. Here's what I've got. Here's the rule I'm citing. And we're good to go. And he does it in a professional oh, very much way. So. And, very and, much so. And everybody walks away and we're all good. We just you, get on right. to the next point. And we can agree to disagree right. and let's put the ball in play because yep. once we snap it, we're all back there in business. Go. There so, you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, and as you've heard many, many times in games that we do, whenever we see Bay Metro, we know before the game starts that we are going to have well trained quality officials. Well, and that says a lot. Well, I appreciate that. But, you know, we do that as a whole. You know, Jeff, you're one of us. You understand that it isn't Lee's crew. It isn't this. It's Bay Metro's out there. Whether I'm doing the Bay Metro stuff or the Tri Valley stuff, you know, I've got 640 guys on staff. To get them all on the same page is a goal. It's never been attained, but it is a goal. Well, you're in the 99th percentile, and that's good <laughs> enough for me. We appreciate you spending a couple minutes well, with us and you wish need. you a great football season. Well, thank you. I'm, Thanks, I'm looking forward to opening it. Have a great Bring season. It on. You bet. Thank you. We'll be back with more in just a minute on BCTV. Good evening and welcome back to our preseason special here on BCTV. We're out at John Glenn, home of the Bobcats, and we have got head coach Jeremy Warner. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Now, we're in season 18, you say, with this program, eight years already at the helm. Where has time gone? It's flying by, man. It flies by when you coach. Coaching, coaching tends to uh, make you feel young. That's why we do it. In your 18 years here at John Glenn, you obviously had somebody at the helm when you came on that was a pretty fair mentor, I would say. Um, I've, I've been very lucky. Um, I played and I was able to uh, coach with, co I'm sorry, I was coached by um, my coach and I actually was able to coach with him, Coach Loop. And then I had another mentor by the name of Mark Miller um, for several years that helped guide me and helped me become what I am today. Well, when you look at the staff out here of this program, you've got great stability at all levels, and that really helps. Uh, without a doubt, we've been, uh, I've been blessed. Um, Coach Miller's come back, uh, Coach Wasmer's come back, um, Coach Jamrog's been on our staff for many years, Coach Neitzel's been on our staff for many years, and we're starting to sprinkle in some young guys like Coach Monville and Coach Woolshide. Um, so we've been very fortunate. Uh, my crew on the varsity level, this will be, our, I believe, our third year together. So, um, and all those guys have been in the program forever. So we've got a lot of years of experience at John Glenn. We came out here and we were blessed to be able to do your season opener last year. And maybe for the non-football player, they walked away going, 
Man, tough way for the John Glenn season to start, but we knew better, and we knew the quality of your Freeland opponent last year, and that was as close as anybody played that school all year long, and you were actually only a couple of plays away from having your hand on that game. Um, you know, I give our kids a lot of credit. I give the kids at Freeland a lot of credit. That was a very close game, and it was a tight game. Um, without a doubt, I know that I made a lot of mistakes in that game, um, but both sides played hard, and I know from our perspective, we wanted to come out on the other end of it, and we didn't, but uh, from that point on, we had to really focus and um, push ourselves to be better the next week. Well, and better you got all year long, but I think one of your great coaching moves last year was to put a lot of confidence in a freshman running your offense. Um, well, we had a freshman quarterback in a brand new offense, so the decision wasn't easy, uh, but without a doubt, he was able to handle it. Um, we kept it as simple as possible for him to, for him to handle, and uh, he did a great job with it. Now, um, with that being said, I told him he's now a senior, because we would have, if he was a junior, he'd now be a senior, so we treat him as a senior, and he's expected to do a better job with this offense and handle more of it. I think his maturity last year and the way I saw him take charge in the huddle was something beyond the years of a freshman. Without a doubt. Um, we were very fortunate that he had the maturity that he had and he handled himself the way he did. Um, we're hoping that he does even better this year with it. Um, but with that being said, without his leadership, it would have been a struggle to get that offense to move last year and he handled it. So there's more expectations for him now this year. I think great excitement around the program too, Coach. You are moving into the Saginaw Valley League, and contrary to what some people think, that's not doom and gloom for John Glenn. I think that you'll be very competitive in a lot of sports, including football. Oh, without a doubt. Um, with, without a doubt, I don't want to be competitive. I want to win, and our kids want to win. So um, it's a huge challenge in the SVL. So um, we're in it, and we have to prepare. Um, like every game's a championship game. So every week is going to be a challenge in the SVL. We realize that. Um, so we have to prepare every week like it is. Tell me about some of your team leaders other than Joe Blong this year that have to step up for your team to be successful. Um, we have, for example, a third year starter for us at right tackle. Um, he also plays defensive line. His name's John Hardy. Uh, he's been a fantastic leader for us. Um, and. We need him to become a better player. Um, as a leader, he's been great for us. He's going to continue to lead our players. Um, another three-year player that's been fantastic for us is Brandon Valier. Um, Brandon Valier is a very good running back, and he's, in my opinion, the best safety in the county. Um, and I think it's going to be a struggle for someone to say he's not one of the better safeties in the conference. Um, he's a great kid. He tackles well. Uh, and also, he's no nonsense outside the outside the field. Um, he leads these guys in the weight room and does a great job with that um, and keeps these guys out of trouble and shows them how to become better football players. I think early last year, even though you had some great seniors on the offense, you leaned on your defense a little bit at the start of the year to get going. Uh, I was extremely impressed with the way that defense played last year. Uh, you always lose some seniors, but uh, talk about how the defense is uh, coming along this year in the early summer. Uh, without a doubt, we. Uh, we were very pleased with our defense last year. Our defense was probably our best unit. Um, we lost some key players, but we have to move on. Um, it's coming along. Uh, we're going to be really young there. So my offense, our offense, has to hold up for the first couple weeks until the defense comes along. And I think eventually the defense will be right where we left off last season, but it's going to take time. Well, Coach, we are excited about the possibilities. We know it's going to be another fun year, tradition-rich program out here. Your stability at the helm, we wish you nothing but success. Thank you. We'll be back as our preseason special carries on here on BCTV. Good evening and welcome back as our preseason special continues on BCTV. Oh, we travel to the northern reaches of Bay County. It's Pinconning, 
And oh, what a great opportunity it is. Coach Dave Lavasser, what an opportunity to meet with you tonight. It's good to meet you, meet with you too, Jeff. All right, we're going to go back in time with your coaching career. You had a little stint at Garber, mm -hmm. but really your first real break came when they asked you to go to a program that uh, had a long-standing tradition of non-excellence up in Oscoda, and you went a long ways into changing that philosophy. Yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't exactly a big football school recently. Um, they had some great kids there, uh, some great athletes in the past. Um, uh, it's a good community. Uh, they had all the right things there. Uh, just needed kind of a little bit of a kickstart, uh, push in the right direction. All the pieces were in place. It was just a matter of kind of organizing them a little bit. After you get your break, then this job opportunity comes up with an opportunity for you to come back <laughs> home to a program that was much like Oscoda prior to Ben Tomke came. He kind of helped to get the program righted, but man, what you've been able to do in a year plus with this program, I just take my hats off. I appreciate it. You know, Ben was uh, really good for the program. You know, I mean, he did all the right things. Uh, the kids loved him. You know, he's a, he's a good guy and he, he works really hard. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we had some good opportunities, some things falling right, uh, spots for us. And uh, we had some, some things come up that worked out well for us and we took advantage of some opportunities and, and, and it kind of worked out well for us. Is it safe to say the success of your program last year and your kids, they really were pleasantly surprised, a little shocked, didn't really know how to belong in that spot, <laughs> but this year I think that'll be different? Yeah, um, you know, last year, uh, I'll be honest, I think uh, most everybody knew or uh, thought we were going to kind of get, you know, pounded a little bit. It was, it was, uh, you know, if you're a betting person last year, you were going to say we're in a new conference, you know, first year, new coach, uh, you know, kind of starting things over, and uh, you think, well, they're not really going to do well. But from the beginning last year, our kids knew. We knew what we were capable of. Uh, our guys from the beginning we had very high expectations and, and they stepped up really well uh, you know our guys are mentally feel like they can stay in any game um, it showed a little bit in the playoff game for us the inexperience uh, many of our guys got into that game and 10th game is hard you know anything out of your routine anything that's going to be go uh, beyond what you're normally accustomed to is going to be difficult it's an adjustment and uh, you know that hurt us a little bit we played really well with Reed City um, you know it was a close game halftime you know it was a one score game we we're well two score game we we're you know 15 yards 10 yards away from a score with two minutes to go couldn't push it in it have been a one score game you know a couple other things didn't work out for us but what happened was we played an experienced team that uh, had been there who was very talented as well, and uh, that hurt us. But, you know, our guys do now have that kind of that little little bit of swagger. You know, we, we kind of been there, and we know what to, what to do in, in certain situations. So, um, you know, we should be okay with that experience moving into this year. Another thing that greatly impressed me about last year is you got the community back involved in this program. Once your kids believe and once the fans believe, you've jumped a major hurdle. Oh, absolutely, and it's easy to a degree here with that because the community is fantastic. We the support we get uh, is unbelievable from local businesses, families outside of our you know parents uh, of the kids that play in our program. You know those families are supportive. Pretty much everybody here is supportive, and and I know you know I know pretty much everybody, and that's easy too. Uh, you know I I I try as hard as I can to not take a lot of credit for a lot of the things we do because it really isn't you know just just me and it's hard because there's so many people behind the scenes that do so many things for us in this community and, and in our coaching family and our team family and uh, it does make it really easy. I followed you very closely in the off season on social media. <laughs> uh, I was blown away at how soon after the season you regroup to become bigger, stronger, faster, and tighter <laughs> bond unit. And I think you've got four yeses for what you've accomplished in the off season in all those areas. Yeah, the off season's stressful <laughs> because it's hard. You know, you get three sport athletes and you get kids who are, um, you know trying to focus on, on athletics and on, on, on athletics in the off season and I don't want to you know hinder that I don't want to interfere with that we encourage that so we make as many opportunities available for them to be in the weight room mornings afternoons uh, you know if the kid calls me and say hey we want to lift here 
this time, then we'll say, let's do it, and we'll set it up. You know, you, you know I got a rule. We got to have six guys. You got six guys put together. We'll get it. You know, we'll we'll make it happen. And we got some coaches that do a really good job of uh, being flexible and available for the kids to lift. And uh, you know the speed training and all the other training in the off season too. We try to push it hard. It is stressful because there's a lot of work and it's a lot. Of, it's tedious in the off season. The social media part of it is that's mostly to keep kids excited about it. And uh, you know it's kind of hokey and I feel I feel you know goofy about it sometimes. But the kids love it, so you got to stay on top of it. Some of the older guys like me love it too yeah. <laughs> because you know it just shows the camaraderie and the commitment that the kids have to the program and that's the base of success yeah it is and uh you know i mean just about any program that you see that's successful is going to have a good off-season program uh they're going to have a, a team commitment year round you know it doesn't mean they necessarily have to commit their all their time to it but um they're going to tr- make every effort they can within any parameters of their particular season that they can you know so it's our kids do a good job of that too Looking at this season, not not 17, uh, talk about some of the people, uh, your key players that have to play big for you to be successful. Well, like you said a moment ago, it's a team, you know, it's a team aspect. We have to, we have a number of guys. You know, we got, uh, we have a very solid group of offensive linemen. Um, you know, we have a couple guys uh, who are battling for positions. Um, so we're, we're a couple guys deep on some positions, the offensive line. Um, you know, Trent Bargeron is one of our returning offensive linemen. He's a, he's just an absolute, you know, he's, he's a tough kid to, tough kid to, uh, to beat up front. Uh, you know, we got a sophomore who came up that's going to be starting for us at center, and uh, he's, he's pretty good. He's, he's going to be a special player. Um, you know, we got uh, uh, Zach Boyd is returning um, as a starter for us on the offensive line. And a number of other guys who had some significant reps as well um, in the offensive line. Uh, you know, in their back, we got a number of backs who are going to be able to help us out. We don't really, you've seen our offense, how we run things, and we kind of try to get the ball to as many guys as we can, um, you know, within our three what we call running back set um, positions. And then um, this year we have a little bit different twist with our splits uh you know our our edge guys uh we had a couple actually mason view is our quarterback this year he started for us last year um as a sophomore on varsity uh but he started at wide receiver and we moved him in at quarterback we kind of kept him um we grooming him for this year he's kind of the guy that we're looking for for the next few years but out on the edge now we got you know three, four guys out on the edge now that we can really um, count on to catch the ball out on the edge. Last year we didn't go to the edge with the ball a whole lot. Um, We got those guys this year we feel are pretty dangerous. Uh, Hunter McGillan on one side is a a junior um, and he's probably the fastest kid in our program and he catches pretty much everything. Um, The other side, Darren Labine, uh, he's a junior as well. Uh, He's not too far behind Hunter as far as speed goes and he catches everything. Uh, both those guys are tremendous athletes, and then we're we're probably three deep with our um, two running back slot positions, uh, and all of them can run and catch the ball and do some pretty amazing. We don't hide many guys on offense, and and to be honest, on defense we return all of our pretty much everybody on defense except for our two safeties and which is a big loss right. two very special special players um you know Shea Van S and, and Carter uh Carter Albright uh Shea being a first team all-stater is hard to lose a kid like that but uh we have a couple guys that we, I don't think many people would would push them to the back of the list so how about your coaching staff? You are pretty blessed with a good group of guys surrounding you. Oh, yeah. We have uh, all of our guys, uh, most all of our coaches, we have uh, you know eight or ten guys who are involved regularly, and nearly everybody is a, is a pink conning person. You know, they're from here um, or they live here currently. Uh, we got a couple guys, uh, you know, Paul Lynch from Midland. Um, he, uh, he helps with uh, Jeff Sanek, who's also our varsity baseball coach to run our, uh, help run our offense. And, uh, but aside from that, you know, pretty much everybody is, is right from here and we're all pretty close. Oh, Coach, we are excited about what's going to happen in Not Not 17. Your season springboarded, I believe, last year with a big win over your rival, Standish. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've moved forward, and we think that nothing but good things are ahead here in Penn Conning. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. And, and we're just trying to take those appropriate, proper, progressive steps. You know, this year it'll be that uh, first win in the playoffs. We'll be back in just a minute as our preseason special continues on BCTV. Things aren't working out for you today. Maybe 
It is just nice to have a little different view on life here during the football season. Amy Mativa is the head athletic trainer here at Pinconning, amongst many other areas and responsibilities. We saw you at Garber last year. I thought you had a twin, but you're just <laughs> truly everywhere. I am truly everywhere. I uh, work for McLaren Bay Region Hospital, and I'm contracted into Pinconning High School for uh, 1,200 hours per contract year. Um, and last year, Garber had... Uh, had a, an athletic trainer step out and they needed coverage and so I went and covered for them. Always trying to be a team player, especially with McLaren and our athletic training services. Now so many people see the finished product on Wednesday night, on Thursday <laughs> night, on Friday night. Oh, yeah. They have no idea from your standpoint when they walk into that training room for you to try and analyze, to diagnose, to fix. Mm -hmm. That is a major undertaking. It is. My actually week starts, actually today started, uh, we had a 3.30 practice today. My day started at 1 o'clock today, um, 1 p.m. And I start taking care of um, water and ice and treatments and rehab. All that goes on before we even start. Up on the field um, and then tonight I'll be here until probably 9 o'clock 9 30 tonight trying to get everything done I'm already starting to do our we have a scrimmage here Thursday and I'm already prepping for that I already talked to maintenance and trying to work with all my team here to make sure that all goes smoothly as well now you like to not have a lot of traffic in your area but it's <laughs> just a given with a contact sport exactly. you're gonna have company mm -hmm. and the coaching staff puts great faith and trust in your ability to get them ready to play or the confidence to say no coach they're not ready to go this week exactly and that it has you have to really take a step and say look either this guy's playing or he's not I mean there's not many times when I will tell somebody you're not playing because most time I can get them ready but there are those instances um, we've had some things happen in the last few years that yeah I've had to say they're not playing and and it is a very hard conflict for myself and the coach but I think we make it work here at Pinconning and it works well all right we're gonna continue back over this way move <laughs> the camera a little bit because it's, yeah, it's starting to rain and and I'm worried about you melting, Amy, <laughs> certainly not me. How long have you been in athletic training? I've been an athletic trainer since 1995 um, for 26 years, um, and I graduated from Lake Superior State University. So love it. Uh, it's a passion of mine, um, and I've been here at Pinconi almost eight years. So, well, I'm going to tell you, continued success in what you do because you – make the finished product go on the nights that they do and we just appreciate taking a couple of minutes to show your perspective on what things are all about. Well thank you so much Jeff. I appreciate the time that you took with me as well and good luck to your season as well. Thank you. We'll be back as our preseason special continues on BCTV. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Bay County TV. Mike Wisdella out here at Western High School with our preseason pigskin preview. With me today, we've got the head football coach of the Bay City Western Warriors, Jeff Rawl. And Jeff, uh, welcome to our preseason show. And uh, again, welcome to B Bay County TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here today. Well, Jeff, uh, week number two. Uh, of the football season and uh, survived the first week. How's the beginning of the second week? How, the, how is the season going so far? Uh, it's been very good for us. Uh, we had 53 young men come out for varsity football. That's the most that we've had in the last 10 years. So the turnout has been great. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, boys that have come back to the program. Uh, we've got uh, some very good skill players, and our linemen are starting to come around. So it's, it's, it's been a very exciting last couple weeks. Very good. Um, also, I noticed that your coaching staff that we were talking about earlier, consistent coaching staff at the varsity level, got to love that consistency. And then when the kids come out, they know ex exactly what to expect from your staff. Uh, that's true. Uh, our, our guys have been around for the most part through the entire staff, freshman through varsity. 
And what's really great here is that at the varsity staff, uh, all of the coaches played football here as well. So there's there's more in stock to it. They, they've been through the program. They know the ups and downs. They know the teams, uh, and they know a lot of the families. So it's it's been a it's been a blessing to have the guys from from the program stick around and be coaches. Coach, let's uh, talk a little bit about last season. Can you give us a recap of what happened last season and how that uh, will help you into this season? Well, uh, you know, win-loss wise, we weren't as successful. We were uh, two and seven. Um, but what what we looked, took from it from a positive uh, is that we had uh, we competed in more games. Our, our kids uh, fought throughout the game. Um, we were a younger team. We didn't have a lot of game experience, but from from game one through game nine, the kids fought the entire time through, uh, and I think they've taken that attitude into the off season. Uh, our kids have worked really hard in the weight room, uh, and and in the summer with our seven on seven and our in our camp, the kids came into and they really pushed themselves. And I think that that started last year with uh, the leadership that we had from that team. Well, one of the great things about the Valley this year, Jeff, and we've talked about it a little earlier, we've got a new member in the Saginaw Valley Conference. Basically, John Glenn, the Bobcats are new. Um, I think it's a wonderful addition to the conference, going to bring a lot of excitement, and they're going to bring a good, solid football program to the conference. I agree. I agree. Our, our boys are really bummed that we don't get to play them this year. Next year they'll be on our schedule, but that's part of the – you always get the talking, you know, these boys see each other all the time and they always want to know who's best and who's the better football team. And uh, starting next year, we'll be able to tell on a yearly basis, which will be good. Well, and they also bring not only to the football field, but they got good quality basketball teams and baseball teams. So, you know, when you get the uh, Western Bobcats together, going to be a good crowd, going to be a good gate, so it'll be a lot of fun. It is. It, uh, you know, when you have, when you can build rivalries in all the sports and, and they're that close together, it, it's just good for the community, win-loss. Uh, and they do. They've had a, a great athletic program there for many years now. So we're really excited to have them in the Valley. Well, speaking of the schedule, Jeff, not that John Glenn's not on it this year. And if they were, that would make it tough enough. But looking at your schedule, you've got five teams that made the playoff this year on your schedule. A daunting challenge for your Warriors, but I got, I got a good gut feeling you're going to be ready for that challenge. Our kids are excited. They're ready to uh, to take on that challenge. Um, that's just the Valley has been a high uh, a high league for for a number of years with a lot of teams that make the playoffs, and that's going in year in and year out. Uh, that's what you have to deal with, and we're looking to get uh, back to the position where we're one of those teams that's making the playoffs, and this is hopefully that year where we take some strides towards that. Well, noticing the kids are out here working hard uh, week number two, got the pads on now. Uh, let's talk about that sophomore quarterback that you have for the uh, Western Warriors. Uh, Carter Bacigalupo, uh, he'll be a sophomore this year. Uh, great kid. Uh, he is uh, extremely intelligent. One of our harder working kids in the program. We started talking to him last year as a freshman uh, after the season and that was that was all it took, just the talking to him. Uh, he started doing a bunch of stuff on his own. He's already become a leader. Uh, he fits in with the, se the seniors, accepted him right away. Um, he's one of those guys who, you know, he'll call kids on uh, on the weekend say, hey, let's go throw some footballs. Uh, he, he's, he's got initiative. Uh, and again, he, he is, he's one of the hardest working kids in the program. He's going to do great things for us over the next few years. Well, I, I had the opportunity to coach out here uh, many, many years ago, Jeff. And I remember, you know, you guys really do have that family atmosphere out here at Western. You got a great group of kids, a great staff. Uh, it's, it's just uh, you're feeling really good about this program and, and it's going in the right direction. I, th I think so. Uh, we do a lot with our kids outside of football. Uh, where it's just a, it's not necessarily football activities, but it's the, it's the guys together. We like to get together and do that kind of stuff. Uh, we like to get involved with our community. Uh, we do a lot of community projects in the football team, and the, and the kids have that bond. They just they get together uh, and they do a lot of things uh, outside of football together, which is it's neat to see that. Well, and that's important to the success of any program, Jeff, is, you know, you're, uh, you get together on the field, get together off and just sit around and chew the fat and have a Coke or something and, and get away from it, but talk about it while you're away. Yeah, we, we don't have them drink soda. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, water. Water. Lots, water. Of, lots of water, lots of water and juice, <laughs> but, but they do. Uh, and that's, 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 you know, and those are some of the best parts of football yeah. is off the football field, you know, after, in the locker room or after practice, talking about the stuff that goes on. And those are the memories that you really remember, uh, you know, 
you do take with you for the rest of your life? Well, one of the important things that uh, people don't really see is you've got a great uh, support from the top down. Your principal, your athletic directors, they're always there for you. So that's, you know, that's important to the program also. Yeah, you really have to have that. Uh, we've been pushing for the last couple of years to help build up our strength program in school to get that going because we really push for our athletes to be athletes. Uh, we, we, we try and keep our kids away from being just football players or just basketball here at Western and to have those strength classes and those programs in place so that the kids can still do all of their different sports but still get stronger and faster has been really important and, and that, that support came uh, this year from the top and, and it's, it's going to help our program in the next few years definitely. Now. Well and you got a great weight room over there you know that's been a huge uh, addition to not only the football program but the whole athletic program and so you know when you got that things going those things are going in the right direction that is definitely a plus for all the student athletes here at Western. Absolutely uh, we're, we're really looking to get back to that to that style when it first came out we used it more and we're getting back to that where we're getting incorporating all of our teams to uh, get out there and use the, the strength facility uh, and, and it's going to pay dividends for us. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking a few minutes. I know you're a busy man. This is a busy time of year. Uh, we here at Bay County TV want to wish you nothing but success over the 2017 football season. We'll see you for a couple games this year. Cong good luck with the Warriors and have a great season. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, that's it from uh, Bay City Western. Coach Jeff Raw, the 2017 Bay City Western Warriors right here on Bay County TV. Good evening and welcome back to our preseason football special here on BCTV. We're at Bay City All Saints, home of the Cougars, and second year head coach Nick Barton. Nick, it is indeed a pleasure to be on your field. Hey, thanks for coming today, guys. Really appreciate it. Well, we're going to talk just a little bit about your coaching career. I know we go back a few years over at the place called the Young Man's Christian Association, <laughs> known to the layman as the YMCA, and used to love to belly up in the office and talk defense when you were at Bullet Creek. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we've known each other for quite a bit, and, uh, you know, it's definitely a pleasure to be on a, a different platform, so to speak. So I really appreciate that. Well, uh, Nick, we're going from 11-man to 8-man football this year for the Cougars. What are some of the smaller little idiosyncrasies that uh, is the difference between coaching at the 8-man and the 11-man? I tell you what, I think the biggest thing is the, the speed of the game, to be honest with you. Um, it's a lot faster. I mean, 11-man's fast, but 8-man's faster. Um, you lose three guys. Um, you know, you can either put a big, bulky, uh, slow guy that's really strong, or you can put a speedster out there, but um, the, the game is much, much faster because there's much more... Um, you know, more plays being ran. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like um, that, you know, you're losing three guys, you condense the field a little bit, that make all that much difference. It, it's a huge difference. Um, it's, a big, it's a big difference when it comes to, um, you know, a lot of things that we used to do and what we used to be successful at. Well, I know as an official, you better be ready to strap it up, have your ibuprofen and be ready to go because they fly up and down the field. But I want to just take a half a step back. Talk about last year that finding the news that you were going eight man, the transition to regenerate the kids, sell them on the fact, and obviously things are looking real good now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when we found out, um, it was kind of a weird situation. Um, there was an announcement after our first game that said, hey, yeah, we're not playing next year. And, you know, there's a lot of questions. I had, we just won our first game. You know, as my first game as winning as a, as a head coach, and I've got parents come to me, hey, we're making a transition to eight man, huh? Uh, apparently, yeah, we are. Um, you know, and, and it really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd be lying here, um, sitting here lying to you if I said, you know, I didn't have any moments where I thought about, hey, is this really what I want to do? Um, you know, the guys were, you know, let's try to put 11 man schedule together and, and all that. Um, but I trust the administration and their decision. Um, you know, we sat back, we talked as a staff, I sat back and I prayed and I, and I had some counseling from other coaches. And, you know, I looked inside and said, hey, man, this, this is all Saints football. This is this is tradition rich All Saints football, and I came to the conclusion that man, I, this this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, you know, last year was a little disappointing. Um, you know, three and six, big senior class. Um, you know, a lot of production over the last two or three years. Um, you know. It was tough. It was really tough. Well, you know, Nick, one of the things that Jeff and I have had many conversations over the years is, you know, even though it's eight man, you still got the tradition. You know, I, I played here many, many years ago. Yep. The tradition's still here. You're going to be playing Friday night. You're going to have a homecoming game. So whether it's 11 man or eight man, you still got that 
cougar rich tradition yeah. playing football what no matter how many are on the yeah. field yeah. absolutely and i think the one thing that just to touch on a little bit more of your point jeff i think the one thing that you know we are more excited about than ever is that now we can actually play for conference championships like holy cow like we we're building stuff here and you know as you play an independent i mean we were in a little bit of a conference a lot of people don't realize that the two a three-team conference was, was us chavez cesar chavez detroit cesar chavez and uh, dearborn star but now we're in an actual legitimate conference where we can win some conference championships you know with the hope of winning some conference conference championships um, you know that's really exciting and that's kind of what our big motto was is you know um, you know we can do some really great things in a new setting you know yep. well one of the great things that I see in moving to eight man is you're finally going to be lining up against schools of like numbers you know you were three and six last year but probably the smallest school you played was almost double your number and it went up from there so really to be three and six last year was a tribute to this team and I really think as this year goes on, playing against like-numbered talent schools definitely. that you're going to have great success. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> you know, you look at that 3-6 and six number, and, and, and you're exactly right. You know, last year, um, you know, not to discredit any of our players, but, you know, we'd go against Tawas. We are going, you know, Climax Gots, who's a Division Eight, but they're a powerhouse. You know, some bigger schools, and we could hang with them for the first – half until like maybe the third middle of the third quarter and then our depth took over their depth took over you know so you're exactly right this eight man allows us to play with teams that are a lot like us in size and you know hopefully we have the opportunity to be successful well, and you got a great fan base here, Coach. You really do. You're going to get the people back. They're going to be here supporting you no matter what. So what a great uh, tribute to the kids to go down the eight, man, keep this tradition going, keep the fans coming in. And, and last year you, you didn't have a homecoming game. You had to improvise. Now you're going to have a homecoming. Everybody's going to feel good. So you got everybody's got to be really happy about having nine schedules, nine teams that are going to show up in, in a conference, possible conference championship. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we, that's the one thing that has really, um, you know, really cemented me here um, is, is the fan base. You know, holy cow, <laughs> it is so tight knit. You know, you go to other, pro, you know, I've been to three other programs, four other programs, and, and they all have their own, you know, their own niche. But I tell you what, man, the All Saints community is just phenomenal. There is so much support. Um, you know, it, and it doesn't matter if it's eight man, eleven man, or forty five man, if that were ever a thing. I mean, they would come out and support, and you know, it, it's it's great. It's great. You look at the competitions going on right now, and your first competition starts really at quarterback and trickles down from there. Yeah, um, we've got a great competition going on right now. Um, in fact, um, you know, we were talking, I've got um, Trevor Sutton last year um, passed for over 2,000 yards in two seasons. Um, that's a lot of production right there. Um, our, our competition going on right now, I have for practice jerseys, they have a white number two and a blue number two. <laughs> Who's going to get that number two? So, um, yeah, we have a competition going on right now. Uh, John Van Sumeren's a first year football player. Um, he's coming in and competing and Oliver Dixon, who is a returning uh, junior, um, he got a couple reps last year, but not many. Um, so it's and just like, you know, when you when you when you basically go to a new, uh, you have a turnover and, and due to graduation, there's always that kind of rebuild. We've got all 11 positions, or all 8 positions, I almost said 11, you know what I said? <laughs> all, right. all 8 positions, um, you know, that they're up for grabs. They're up for grabs, but we've got a lot of great young talent. Um, we are a young team again. Um, guys are just coming out here competing. I love it, man. I love it. And defensively, uh, let's talk about a couple of those players. Zipka sure. is one name that kind of pops out, mm -hmm. and I, I've seen that young man play, and I know that family. They like to put a helmet on you. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, offensive-wise, our schemes don't change too much. Um, we lose two tackles, which we graduated, and, and, a, and a receiver for us um, that, that for you know, in our base sets. But, um, yeah, it's Shipka, man. I tell you, um, we've got defensively, that, that's the most affected by eight, man. We used to move around and move guys around all the time. That's how we were you know, we were successful with. Um, yeah, so, you know, Shipka's, you know, he, he likes to play, man. Yeah. He likes to play. Um, but don't sleep on, uh, we've got some sleepers, too. I mean, we have Brendan Earhart, who um, he went from nose tackle my first year to defensive end last year and led our team in tackles um, two years. So um, between him and Shipka, I mean, we're real solid up the middle, and, um, you know, we've got a good supporting cast around those two. You also talk about the tradition-rich program. 
you got some middle-aged to older guy hanging around here a little bit that just can't get away from football. Talk about the influence and the passion that he has, even though he's retired. No, not you, you too, Mike. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Coach Beisel, man, he is. Uh, he, he's a he's a legend. Um, you know, he is. Um, you know, I, you always hear stories of him. You know, I, I graduated. Oh, from we Central. got stories. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. You know, we. Uh, you know, you always hear stories about him. I went to Central, so. You know, the thing is, you always heard kind of the stories about Baisel um, and, and how intense he was oh. and, you know, how, you know, he loved his players and stuff like that. But honestly, I mean, he's been out of coaching for a long time now, and he comes back, and you just watch him with the, with the young men, and he is phenomenal, phenomenal. So he's exactly what, you know, as, as coaches, you know, we, we, we aim to be, you know. Yeah, he, he is a special. I had the opportunity to play for him for two years. He was my running backs coach and quarterback coach, and I'll tell you what, if we didn't do it right, Right, he would get the football, run the tee, and uh, wouldn't have any pads on, and, and he was not oh, afraid to go it. after it. So uh, he's just a tremendous guy, and and to this day, you know, he sees you and he says hi to you, and uh, even after almost 40 years, he really uh, is. He's he's one in a million. He's yeah. a he's a mold breaker. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, one of the times we were in the weight room, he came in and he said. Uh, Coach Barton, um, nice to see you. Goes and talks to, uh, went and talked to John Paul Shipka. I was talking with him, and then Brent Earhart came over, and he's like, was it, was it your class that we had that I did the 200 push-ups? And I'm like, 200 push-ups? Holy jeez. So I got, I got I had to up my game. You know, I had to try to do 200 push-ups. The next day I was like, oh, man, I was really sore. But, uh, no, he's, he, he's he, yeah, definitely he's intense. And, you know, he's, he's great to talk football with. He'll talk football with you all day. Well, and he's got a great passion for this school. Yeah. He You know, he's a St. James grad, coach at All Saints. Uh, he's just got a great, great passion uh, for Catholic education and Catholic uh, activities and, and and Cougar football. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He, uh, yeah, he, between him and uh, Dinah Du Russell, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, they they are they are yeah. two of the biggest supporters I've ever seen, yeah. and they're they're great to be around. Well, we're looking around at 17 kids on the roster. I don't know what you're going to be able to do with all those substitutes, Coach, but we like the energy. We like the style. The kids are definitely excited about things. I see that passion in you, Coach, and uh, we are excited to see how this year is going. Wish you nothing but success here at All Saints. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We're actually at 19, but we have got a couple kids missing, so so that there's more depth there. <laughs> there's more depth there, so no, we really appreciate it. Really appreciate Bay County TV coming out and supporting us. Um, you know, it's a great platform that you guys have, and we look forward to the season. Coach, have a great year. It was Definitely. a pleasure talking to you. Definitely. Great success. Thank you. We'll be back as our pregame preseason special oh. continues here on BCTV. Good evening and welcome back to our preseason special here on BCTV, home of the Garber Dukes. Coach Jake. Coke Willard. That's exactly right. I practiced it three times. Nobody can say it like the man himself. Yeah. Welcome, Coach. It's a pleasure to have you. Good job, Good job with that. <laughs> well, you know, three times the charm. So uh, when we look at your season, we're going to start by looking back at last year. The great success of this program, two losses on the season, both the teams that went to the state semis. You had some folks last year. Yeah, yeah, we were uh, had a great year um, with the number of our players. We had a lot of speed and uh, came together really well as a team, um, a really tight-knit group. So um, we had a super year. We were, we were proud of the guys and um, looking forward to, to new and better things this year. Well, and Coach, this year you probably got the same schedule uh, in the Tri-Valley facing you this, uh, again. So, you know, what's this year's schedule look like uh, and w uh, how do you feel about the teams that you're going to be playing? Yeah, we're, we're facing basically the same teams. The schedule's changed up a little bit. Um, we get uh, Frankenmuth early this year, uh, week three, um, and then uh, we have to go back to Millington again for the second straight year just because of uh, conference dropout. Um, uh, so those will be tough games as usual. Uh, the rest of the schedule, I mean, Ogama Heights and uh, Bridgeport's going to be much improved. Um, and you never, Birch Run always comes and plays very tough physical football. Uh, North Branch 
coach. He's got a new football coach. Uh, you don't want to leave anybody out. You know, um, you can't overlook anybody in this league or in this game. So uh, we're just excited to uh, take one at, one game at a time. Well, and the good news, I'm sorry, Jeff, the good news is uh, we're going to follow you up to Ogemaw Heights, and that's going to be our very first game this year is uh, the Dukes traveling up and taking on a, you know, a team that's been up and down the last few years, but Ogemaw Heights Falcons, tough kids, well coached, and, and they'll bring it. They will really will do a nice job. Absolutely. They're, uh, they got a new coach this year from the UP, um, and he's got a great reputation, uh, a lot of coaching uh, within his family. His dad, I know, is a, is, has been a coach for years up there, and uh, so he's going to bring um, you know, confidence and toughness to that group. We expect nothing but the best from Ogilma Heights. When we look back at this program, tradition rich is probably a good phrase. Go back to the Coach Harvey days, and then, of course, Dave Schwartz had a great run. You really have picked up the ball and just continued to roll with it here in the success at Garber. Yeah, you know, it, it starts with uh, kids and coaches uh, first. I mean, the, the kids put in all their time, um, you know, in the off season and stuff, and, and we really try and have some fun with that. Um, yeah, and we've had, I mean, just, you know, Ed Harvey Field out here, and then you, you've you got, uh, you know, Dave Schwartz came in, did a great job for, for years, and it was an honor to take over after those two and just try and keep the consistency and the uh, the promise going with the with the uh, Garber football program. And um, every year we just strive to, to get better and to uh, bring up great young men um, and, you know that's our that's our main goal every year. Well, you know, you know your your coaching staff consistency throughout there, uh, coach, which is nice for the kids because when they walk on the field that first day of practice, they know exactly what they're going to get into because of the consistency of the coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to uh, you know we we've been fortunate to keep uh, a good set of our coaches uh, within for many years and that definitely helps us with continuity and and the kids understanding um, you know what's ahead of them and and you know how to react and 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 move with coaching um, from our different coaches um, so that that has been nice uh, obviously there's we've had a few turnover with a few of our coaches but uh, our kids have done a great job accepting them and and really uh, you know, learning from them as well. We're going to flash back just a little bit to your playing days. We go back to a, a conference only the old know about the North Michigan or Northeast Michigan Conference, NEMC. You had the pleasure to play for one of our all-time favorite people and Coach Paul Walderzak. Talk about the effect he had on you as a player and as a person. Oh, I mean, uh, to play for Paul Walderzak uh, back at Standish was incredible. Um, he had so much, um, he had your back all the time, you know, that was the big thing with Paul. Um, I, I still get to see him, you know, at least once or twice a year, and we kind of reminisce and talk about the old days, but I just remember, uh, first and foremost, he cared. He cared about individual players, um, and, you know, he loved for people to be good football players but he wanted he wanted people to be good people and he really cared and put himself out there to make that possible no matter what love playing for Paul Walzak well and, and you know we were just over at All Saints uh, talking to their staff you know and I'm a Cougar from way back in 78 so you know Beisel had a big influence Jeff Beisel who I'm sure you know had a big influence on me there's there's something about those type of coaches they're with you wherever you go whether it's on the football field or just in life and they they really do leave a mark on you absolutely they do um you know i'll always i remember a lot of the little times um you know when he either wanted to you know give me a good swift kick in the butt because i needed it yep. um or you know just came and put put his arm around me or another player and if we needed it and said hey it's gonna be it's gonna be better tomorrow or uh you need help in something um I, I can do that for you or come to me. Um, and that's, you know, that's why he's such a great role model and a coach and a teacher, and uh, that's what it's all about. You've got a great team atmosphere this year, but talk about a couple of your special kids that have to have a big year in order for you to have success. Yeah, overall, we're, we're going to be pretty young this year. I think we will have 11 seniors on the team, um, and a couple of those seniors are out for their first year. So um, we'll be under 10 as far as seniors go. The, the seniors that we have have really done a great job this summer uh, stepping up in a leadership role. 
Um, so we're very happy with that. We've had a great turnout in the off season in, in the weight room, um, probably one of our best ever uh, with kids showing up and getting there and working hard. Um, as far as individuals go, uh, it all starts with Ben Van Sumeren right out the gate. Um, Obviously, you can't do it with one guy, so several guys are going to have to, you know, chip in and, and, and do a really good job for us. But Ben is going to be instrumental for us um, uh, all over the field uh, at the quarterback position, running back, wide receiver, and linebacker positions as well. Um, a couple other, Mike Dawzell's back for his third year. He's one of our key or linemen on the field uh, at left tackle. Um, Jacob Mannion is a is a two and a half, three year starter at center. He will be crucial up front for us in, in making all the calls and decisions for the line. Um, uh, Manny Joppich will be instrumental as well um, as a running back. I mean, I could go on and on. I don't want to miss anybody, but there's just a few names. Well, and defensively, Coach, you know, you got to keep them uh, out of the uh, end zone. So you're pretty, you feel pretty good about the defense this year? Yeah, the defense is going to be is exciting this year. Okay. It really is. Um, we're not the biggest team. Um, we're a little bit taller than we have been in the past. Uh, we've got more athletic type. Uh, you know, 5'10", 180, 90 pound kids, uh, a lot more of those. So we're, we're going to change it up a little bit and go to more of a 3-5 defense um, where, where we're sending a little bit um, more blitzing and we're, and we're trying to kind of mess up their flow. Uh, so the kids are having a great time with it. Um, and Coach Peterson, Scott Peterson's our defensive coordinator. He's done a great job. Uh, we're really excited to get it going and uh, Thursday at our scrimmage we'll be able to test it out. Well, and this doesn't go to any of those other Tri-Valley schools, so we can talk about the 3-5 all day long, and nobody's going to know about it, Coach. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, they're going to they're gonna find out about it anyway, Thursday, so, right? you know, it, it is what it is. Who you got Thursday in the scrimmage? Uh, we have John Glenn, which is a, a nice crosstown rivalry. Yeah. Uh, we open with them over at the scrimmage. We're at SVSU at noon on, uh, on, on Thursday tomorrow. And then we have Yale and then Arthur Hill. It's a good scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, we're excited about yeah. it. Every year it's been very good and, and given us a good test, and good. so we're excited. Well, you didn't mention any 6'5", 245-pound nearings on your defense, but you've got a lot of athletes that are going to flow to the football, make plays for you. We are excited to see the continued progress and success here at Garber. We wish you nothing but the best of luck, Coach. Thank you so much. appreciate you guys and appreciate uh, everything that you do uh, on TV and getting the uh, Bay County Schools um, out there and let people watch. And You guys are fabulous. So. Thanks, Coach. Thank we love what we do. Have a great year. Absolutely. Thank we'll you. be back as we put the wraps on this preseason special right after these on BCTV. Good evening and welcome back. Jeff Doan and Mike Wasdala have really had a lot of fun over the last series of days perusing all the teams in northern uh, Bay County to southern Bay County, the east, the west. We've seen it all, and, man, it really sets the table for what could be a lot of fun this well, fall. Well, Jeff, it was a pleasure to be able to talk to all the coaches in the Bay County. They're very excited. You could tell just by being around them. They love this uh, type of year. Uh, second week, uh, you know, they're fired up for that screen. Image. You want to get a put another hat on a different color, but man, I'll tell you what, we've got some exciting football in Bay County this year. We look forward to this year. Last year we just gave people a little flavoring in yep. one game of football. This year we're able to bring a complete schedule in addition to a lot of other fall sports. So we're expanding beyond just football and basketball. Well, besides football, Jeff, you're right. We're going to do a little volleyball. We're going to do a little soccer. We're going to do some swimming. We're going to do some tennis. So, you know, we're going to show a plethora of sports for all the schools here in Bay County. And we're just really happy that uh, we're getting great support from all the schools. They're welcoming, welcoming us with open arms. Uh, they like Bay County TV, and I hope they have as much fun watching it as you and I have doing these uh, games and all the contests. Well, the family that we've surrounded ourselves with here at BC TV just makes it a joy to come out on a daily basis. It, it really is. We, you know, besides having uh, great football teams, we have outstanding athletic directors, Jeff, superintendents, uh, who can forget about the, the guys and girls behind the camera. 
camera. You know, Nick Page, your daughter, daughter Natalie, is going to be help, helping. Jeff Hildebrandt. We've got a wonderful, wonderful group. And, you know, and we got, let's not forget the kids. We got good, good quality student athletes here in Bay County. Well, and we love to sing the praises of those student athletes yes. too. It isn't just about football, as uh, Coach Quill said. <laughs> he, he says, yes, it's about making quality individuals as well. Yeah, you know, there, there's a reason you call them student athletes. They put student first, and that's what these kids are. They're students in the first, and then they're athletes second. But they, you know, they're they've got a lot on their plate. They go to school all day. They come to practice, game days. So you know, I we both uh, Jeff and I tip our hats to those uh, young men and and ladies or what they do on a daily basis and we just absolutely love watching them and bringing the best of Bay County to everybody that watches. Well how they have to balance their life between school between the work a little bit of social yeah. time you need to be a kid tough balance but how are the opportunities for somebody to have that chance to watch us? Maybe they don't have charter. How else do they communicate? Well, they can uh, watch us on uh, YouTube, Jeff. You can search Bay County MI for the YouTube, and they can also uh, catch us out on Facebook at fb.com uh, slash Bay County TV. So Nick, you know, he's kind of a technology wizard. He has us all covered on all the bases. And, uh, you know, we, we show the programs uh, three times a day for about a week so everybody can see it and uh, it's just a lot of fun and last year when we did the basketball season in the winter man did we have great response and great support from everybody that we talked to and we really appreciate the kind words that everybody gave us from last year well we had a ton of fun last year we only look for more fun oh, this year and again thanks to you it all happens so as we get excited about the fall season i think that about puts the wraps on what has been a great show and a great start to what should be an awesome fall here in bay county yeah I'll just stay tuned everybody we're going to have a lot of fun we're going to have some uh, wonderful football games and swimming and volleyball we've got a big big fall season and don't forget jeff we're going to go into the winter again we're going to go do some spring stuff so uh you know we're going to have a lot of fun and uh, i hope everybody enjoys watching we're going to target 50 games this year in all sports look to hit them all at least one time so hope that you have as much fun looking forward to this as we will bring it to you so thanks again for being part of our pigskin preview in this 2017 looking at bay county fall sports and football have a great night everyone